Good morning and welcome. This is Megan Mansfield from Accordant Company. Thank you for joining us today for our webinar from GCPay titled Streamline the Subcontractor Billing Process with GCPay's Sage Intact Integration. Our presenter today is Christina, a channel account manager from GCPay. Before we get started, I want to address a few housekeeping items. Everyone is muted for a clean listening experience. If you have any questions, please type them into the questions box. We will collect the questions and address them at the end of the session. For the best viewing experience, please maximize your screen. Today's webinar is being recorded and a link to the recording will be provided via email. With that, I'd like to turn it over to Christina. Thank you so much, Megan. I really appreciate that introduction. Um, again, my name is Christina Snagrev, and I am the channel account executive here at GCPay. Um, I am excited to uh, demo for you guys today, you know, GCPay, um, and just a little bit of a background. I actually used to work for Sage directly. I was with Sage for just a little over five years. Um, and uh, recently transitioned over to GC Pay directly uh, just this last April. So again, having a little bit of an insight about your guys' Sage ERP solution, as well as the power of what GC Pay can do for you. All right, so again, uh, as Megan stated, we are going to uh, talk to you about how GC Pay can simplify the application for payment process. All right, for those of you who uh, have not heard of GC Pay, GC Pay is a cloud-based platform for managing the entire subcontractor pay application process. I love GC Pay's founding story. So right around 2003, there was a construction auditor who happened to be the founder of GC Pay, and his job was to go in and audit commercial general contracting businesses. And after doing this for a few years, you know, as you know, that paper chasing process, paper pay up back and forth, the lien waivers were just such a mess. He was like, there has to be a better process than this manual way that my clients are handling the pay up process today. Luckily for him, his brother was uh, his brother-in-law was a software engineer, so they teamed up in 2003 to create GC Pay, and really it was just for their clients that they were auditing. But then quickly, you know, one general contractor talked to another, and it spread like wildfire, and everyone saying, "Yes, we would also like to better automate and streamline our payout process." So fast forward 18 years later, they now have over 45,000 companies on the platform. Last year, they generated just a little over 30 billion in contracts and currently managing projects in all 50 states and Canada. I should also mention GC Pay had partnered with Sage in 2004 to develop that direct API integration. So almost as long as GC Pay has been around, we've been partnered with Sage. So why do companies choose GC Pay? I would definitely say, you know, having a direct API integration into your Sage platform, we're able to eliminate you having to, you know, hand key or double enter any of that data that you've already entered into Sage. You'll be able to see how, e how easily subs are able to submit their billings right in the platform. Your appropriate approvers are all automatically notified, completely eliminating the, those back and forth emails, bogged down inboxes, and automating that entire payout process. GC Pay will completely uh, eliminate the possibility for a sub to overbill line items or contracts or make any sort of math mistakes. Again, part of that direct integration includes automatically pulling over approved change orders from Sage. So this will eliminate you hand keying them and also ensuring that your subs are never again able to bill for unapproved change orders. You'll never have to deal with missing lien waivers since your custom lien waiver is generated automatically in the platform every single time. There's no need for you to create the lien waivers or worry about there being any errors on them. They are perfect every single time. GC Pay comes with an internal routing and approval process, which you'll be able to customize for each job. GC Pay will also streamline the entire compliance process. You can automatically notify subs when their compliance items are about to expire. You can even stop subs from submitting a billing if they haven't updated their insurance. 
DC Pay recently was voted number one construction accounting software on G2's review site. Uh, we were actually voted number one for uh, Q1 and once again, voted number one for Q2. We received an overall satisfaction score this summer of 92%, as you can see on the right-hand side, 9.0 for, uh, for ease of use, 9.3 for quality of support. The average was 8.1 huge kudos to our support team, uh, 8.9 for ease of setup. In G2's summer report, uh, GCPay received top honors in 15 categories, including easiest setup, fastest implementation, best support. Uh, Captera is a third-party review site where we have over 120 positive reviews, currently rated 4.6 out of 5 stars. I know customer support and ease of billings are important for your team, so here are a few comments from Sage users to give you an idea of what others are saying about the platform. As you can see, what I've highlighted in yellow is kind of that common theme. GC Pay is extremely easy to use, excellent customer service, support is very responsive, the workflow for GC Pay is something and easy to follow. Again, supports just around the level of support that GC Pay provides to our customers. I've never seen a tech support department that was more available, more responsible, I'm sorry, responsive and more knowledgeable on any software I've ever used. From day one, the support to get this system up and running and keep it running every day has been great. I'm so incredibly impressed with GC Pay's responsiveness when placing a call for support. I don't believe I've ever waited more than two minutes for someone to answer my call. Now, if you're wondering, all right, well, what about the subs? What are the subcontractors saying about GC Pay? Well, recently, GC Pay sent out a survey to over 40,000 customers for sub feedback, and just over 5,000 subs responded, stating that they rate 4.3 out of five stars. 83% stated that they're very satisfied using GC Pay. And um, one quote, uh, you know, specifically that I love that, you know, G, uh, subs are saying is, you know, it's simple. Again, it's easy to use, saves me time. Previous pay applications are easily accessed. I'm able to communicate with the GC as they submit a pay application. All the waivers and forms are, st are standardized. I wish all GCs would use GC pay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and switch gears here. I am going to uh, jump into the live platform here. Give me just a minute as I get this switched. <clears throat> All right. And Megan, can you confirm? Can you still see my screen here? Yes, sorry. I can absolutely okay. see your screen. I apologize for the delay. <laughs> no worries. Thanks so much, Megan. Just want to be sure. All right, great. So now that we're jumping into the the, the actual live demo here of GC Pay, first off, what I want you guys all to notice here is that we're just on a web browser. Again, GC Pay is a fully web-based SaaS platform, meaning that you are able to access GC Pay from any location, any device as long as you have an internet connection. The GC Pay website is where you'll go to log in and the same goes for your subcontractors. Now, today we're focusing on Intact. Just know, we not only have a direct integration into your Sage 300 CRE solution, as well as Sage 100 contractor, and now, of course, Sage Intact. So, logging in here, as you can see under quick links, we're able to access different areas of the software here. Recent news, of course, just advising you of may maybe any recent updates that our team has made to the website. Now, to start a new project, you can simply come here, select start a new project. And again, because we have a direct API integration, we are able to pull open your company folder. Give this just a minute as it thinks about it. Let's see here. I think it just got stuck. There we go. So start a new project. You would be able to select your company folder. And from there, you would be able to select from the list of projects that you currently have active 
in job cost. And when we pull that over, and I'll, we already started a job for today's demonstration purposes, under Ridge Lake Business Center, we're able to pull over all of that project information just as you have it in Sage Intact. So the project name, the project number, location, county, all of this is being pulled from your Sage Intact ERP solution. So again, no hand keying. This is also the same information that will be used later on to automatically customize your lien waivers. All right scrolling down under users so users that are added to this project at any part of the process will be shown here uh, users can be of course added at any time now you let's just say you have a default user someone that needs to be added to every single project every single time just know you do have the ability under the company level settings to designate users as default users. So maybe the project admin or you know um, accounting team that needs to be added to every single project, you'd be able to select them as a default. This way they automatically show up to every single project. Now let's just say you have you know any of those variable users. You would just select add users and then you'd be able to add those project managers, project admins or coordinators directly from here. Now drilling into the user, this is now where we get to either view or change the user's roles and permissions within GC Pay. So we get to select whether this user is going to be responsible for reviewing compliance items that come in from our, our subs or you know the, the lien officer, so responsible for re reviewing any of those lien waivers that come in or a project manager who's able to change project settings or add other subs to this project. Next, you get to select a review order. So again, we can get very granular on how you want to customize the routing and review process. So we can select whether this goes to Megan as first reviewer, then to me as second reviewer, then maybe to Tim as uh, third reviewer, and then back to Megan as final reviewer. All right, scrolling along here across the, the top. The next section here under project companies is now where we get to go ahead and invite subcontractors to this Ridge Lake Business Center project. As you can see under subcontractor, I've already added Jackson Keating and AC to go ahead and se select another subcontractor. We would just select add company and we can type in the name of the uh, subcontractor we can type in their EIN number and basically with a click of a button we're able to automatically add that subcontractor to this project they just both been alerted letting them know they've now been added to the Ridge Lake Business Center project all right again just scrolling along the the top here the next tab over is integration so again really highlighting that integration between gc pay and your sage intact construction solution from here we're able to link the commitments that we've already entered into sage intact so as you can see we would have a full list of all of the commitments that you currently have in sage now i can add one by one or i can just come up here auto select match contracts GC Pay is smart because we already added the subcontractors, Jackson Heating and AC and Barth Electric, GC Pay can automatically detect which commitments belong to which subcontractor for the, the Ridge Lake Business Center project. So we're able to now add those commitments all at once. All right. Now, GC Pay does also give you the ability to bring in commitments as a lump sum, or we can bring in commitments as uh, uh, if it's detailed. So with, if you're detailing that commitment in Sage with the line by line item detail description and value, we can pull over all of that description uh, that you have already in Sage. Alternatively, uh, if you wanted to bring in just the lump sum and have your subcontractors detail the schedule of values, uh, I can show you how we can do that as well. All right, so now that we've brought over the commitments here, because Barth Electric, we brought over 
all that line item detail that I've already filled out in Sage. So as you can see, we have the description and we have the value. Because we've already approved this in Sage, Barth Electric, Electric has been notified that their schedule of values has been approved and that this is now billable. Now for Jackson Heating and AC, we're gonna go ahead and allow them to go ahead and detail the SOV and we'll go ahead and review and uh, approve. Uh, so they've just been alerted that they now need to go ahead and edit their schedule of values. All right, so again, moving across the top here, the next tab over is compliance. So another key area around the integration that we have with Sage. Now, if you're using Sage 300 uh, CRE or Sage 100 contractor and you're managing those compliance items in Sage, just know we can pull over all of those compliance items just as you have it. Now, with Sage Intact, GC Pay is going to be the source of truth for your compliance items. So we have the ability to go ahead and add which compliance items we require for the subcontractor. GC Pay will automatically notify your subcontractors 30 days prior as well as the day of expiration date. So again, no one on your team is ever again going to have to be manually tracking your subcontractors of their required compliance items. GC Pay will manage that entire piece. Your subcontractors have the ability to upload those compliance items directly into the platform. So all you have to do is verify. All right. So next, I'm going to go ahead and now show you what it looks like from the subcontractor side. Uh, detailing that schedule of values. So I'm now going to go ahead and log out and I'm going to log back in as Jackson Heating and AC. All right. Now that we're logged in, as you can see on the, the top right corner here, Joe Jackson, Jackson Heating and AC, the subcontractor's view look of GC Pay looks very similar to what you saw as logging in as a general contractor. We have quick links here, of course, recent news here. Your subs, they can come up top to their project tab where it's gonna show them a list of maybe any project they may be working on with any general contractor. Alternatively, most uh, subcontractors would go straight to their dashboard. And most subs actually will just make the dashboard their home page so that this is the very first page that they see when logging in to GC Pay. As you can see, the dashboard makes you know a one-stop shop for your subs. They're able to easily see everything that's needed from them on this one page. No more does your subcontractor have to go digging around from project to project to figure out which compliance item, which lien waiver is needed. They can easily come in here. And as you can see, we've really gamified it for your subs. Red with a number means you owe something. Green, zero, you're good to go. So they can take a look. All right, what are my required compliance items? They can go down the line all on this one page and upload those updated compliance items what lien waivers are outstanding. So again, no more of them having to guess, you know, which waiver is needed. They can easily see here, this is the unconditional, this is the conditional progress. Uh, so again, making it very easy for your subs to know exactly what's required of them. Now, as we come over here under not submitted, we can see here, we have that project, the business uh, Ridge Lake Business Center. And it looks like we just need to go ahead and edit the schedule of value. So I'm gonna select edit. Now, as you can see here, this big yellow box, again, making it very easy for your subcontractors. They know that their schedule of values must be that approved value of 177.65. So again, GC Pay will eliminate the ability for your subcontractor to ever overbill a contract. They can come in here, they can add line by line item description and value. Alternatively, most subcontractors already have an Excel or a CSV file that contains the schedule of values. So I'm gonna go ahead and upload 
my schedule of values, and there we go. As you can see, we have our description, we have the value. Of course, for demo purposes, we made sure that added up exactly to 177.65, looks good. We can go ahead and save. Now, just so you can see here, let's just say we uploaded you know, 2,000 instead of 1,000. Again, making it very clear they are currently off by $1,000. So again, eliminating the ability for a subcontractor to ever overbill any sort of contracts. All right, we're going to go ahead and save the schedule of values. Now, as you can see, this green box under submit the schedule of values, the submit button is grayed out. And that's because GCPay has the ability to require any sort of document come along. So whether a document that's required to come along in that very beginning, you know, project stage, you know, along with their schedule of values, like you see here, or what I'll show you later on, maybe a document that's required to come along with the actual uh, invoice. So as you can see here, the general contractor is requiring that a wage and rental agreement come along. So again, I'm just going to go ahead and simply upload my wage and rentals agreement. And now that we've uploaded, the submit button is now highlighted in blue. I can go ahead and submit my schedule of values. All right, so again, all we've done at this point is just submitted the SOV. It is not billable until the GC reviews and approves that. Now, before we get to that next piece, I do want to show you what compliance looks like from the sub side. So as you can see, this big yellow box, outstanding compliance uh, issues. The compliance tab also highlighted in red. And you know that they've already been alerted via email 30 days prior, as well as the day up. So many different ways that GCPay is alerting your subcontractors of their required compliance items. They would simply just come up here to the upload button, upload that updated compliance item, or we provide a cover sheet. This is very useful, especially if you have any low tech subs. Maybe they're still emailing or faxing those you know, compliance items in. They would simply just print this out and fax it in along with that updated compliance item. And this unique QR code will automatically upload that compliance item to GC Pay. So again, once that's uploaded, your compliance officer for this project will be alerted so they can review, make sure that's the correct document, and then they have the ability to either approve or reject. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and log out, and I'm now gonna go ahead and log back in as the general contractor. So I can now go ahead and review and approve the subs SOV. All right, so again, as a general contractor, you have, of course, the project tab as well, but you also have the dashboard. So again, every single user on your team will have their very own dashboard. And again, your dashboard is going to be unique based off of your role or your permissions within GC Pay. So again, if I'm a project manager and I'm only responsible for my projects, I'm only gonna be able to see my projects versus maybe an admin user that needs to see everything happening across you know, all projects would have the ability to, to toggle between all projects. Um, again, we can see here, anything that's been submitted, here's that project, Ridge, uh, Ridge Lake Business Center, schedule of values, and I'm going to go ahead and hit review. All right. Again, if you're requiring any sort of document to come along, you can review that document here. Make sure that that's the correct document that you requested. We already know that your subs cannot overbill or even underbill contracts. So really all we're looking for here is that this schedule of values is as detailed as you need it to be. We would simply hit review. Now let's just say, you know, maybe this isn't, we need it to be broken out in even further detail. So I'm going to go ahead and hit reject. Notice you are not able to reject anything within GC Pay without leaving a comment. And this is really just to help your subcontractors from being blindsided. You know, if you do reject something, they're, they're going to receive an email letting them know it's been rejected. And in the body of the email are your comments 
letting them know exactly why it's been rejected. So again, they can easily hop back into GC Pay and they know exactly what needs to be done so that they can go ahead and revise and resubmit back to your team. All right, we're gonna go ahead and approve. So now that we've approved the schedule of values, Jackson Heating and AC has been alerted. It is now billable. All right, we're gonna hop back into this project here. And what I want you to notice is that the project name is now highlighted in red. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up this project and notice here that the integration tab is highlighted in red. So it looks like GC Pay is alerting you that something may need your attention. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up here. This is that schedule of values that we just approved for Jackson Heating and AC. But in red, it's telling you that the schedule has an unmapped contract item. What this is telling you is that a, a, a change order has just come through. GC Pay and Sage talk to each other every 30 minutes, which, you know, if you approve a change order in Sage, it will automatically flow into GC Pay 30 minutes later, no hand keen whatsoever. If you scroll down here, take a look, change order number one for $8,000 has just come through. If we were to sit here and chit chat for the next 20 minutes, you would see this change order automatically added to this approved schedule of values. Alternatively, we know that there's times that you may need to push things through quicker. So I can just so select this change order and hit save. And there we go, the change order has now been added. So two key things here, no hand keying. No one at your company will be hand keying these in. Your subs are definitely not hand keying these in. These approved change orders automatically flow straight from Sage. Second, these are the only change orders that your subs are gonna have the ability to bill against, which will eliminate the possibility for subs to ever again bill for unapproved change orders. All right, now I kind of mentioned earlier, we have project level settings here up on the top right corner. So again, any setting that's going to be set up for every single project, every single time, but we also have project level settings. So I wanna show you a couple of options within the project level. Now under billing options, GC Pay gives you the ability to require a bill due date. So your you know, subcontractors are required to get their, uh, sub, their invoices to your team by the 25th. Next, GC Pay will automatically send billing reminders uh, to your subs seven days prior to that bill due date that you have listed. Now, if I was to check this box here, we have the ability to close the month out after the bill due date. So if you're having any issues with subs submitting their billings into you late, just checking this box here will ensure that your subs are never again able to submit invoices to your team after that required bill due date. All right, scrolling down under lien waivers, I wanna show you a couple of lien waiver settings. All right. So the way it works with lien waivers is that your team would send us all of your lien waivers in Microsoft Word format, your conditionals, unconditional, partial, final, you know, state specific, owner specific, whatever lien waiver you have. After that, GC Pay's team does all of the heavy lifting. We will upload them and tag them so that the correct county, owner, start date, billing numbers, project names are all automatically generated. No need ever again for your team to be manually customizing waivers for each sub. Now, after your waiver is uploaded, any of those standard waivers will just be automatically added to every single job. Now, let's just say you have a project specific waiver. You could just simply select add lien waiver and select those variable lien waivers from your lien waiver bank as needed for this specific project. All right, next, we get to also select whether this waiver is going to be required before submission or you know, once approved or manually. We also get to select, is this going to be a partial or an unconditional or a final waiver? The system is smart and knows when to trigger the final waiver.
Lastly, we also have the ability to select whether digital signature is okay or do we require this lien waiver to be notarized. All right, and again, you, we, we have the ability to add any you know, project-specific compliance items here, uh, any custom documents that you may need, as well as checklist items. All right, now I'm gonna get to the fun part that I know you've all been waiting for, which is going to be me as a subcontractor submitting the invoice. So I'm gonna go ahead and log out, and I'm gonna log back in as Jackson Heating and AC. All right, and I'm just gonna go ahead and go straight into that project. I'll type in the name Ridge Lake Business Center, and there it is. Now, because we've approved the schedule of values, as you can see here, only now has this green create link appear. So now I can go ahead and create my, um, my invoice. All right, retainage. I'm not going to bore you guys with retainage here, but just know we're going to pull in retention just as you have it in Sage. Now, GCPay uh, supports multiple kinds of retention, whether that being the standard variable frozen, you know, the locking and releasing of specific line items. As a general contractor, you control retainage. So just know that there's many options and you can change that throughout. All right, scrolling down. Now, before we talk about what a subcontractor can do, let's talk about what a sub cannot do. So the cost code, the description, the total uh, schedule values, or if this was my third or fourth billing, any previous build amounts, I cannot edit. The only thing that I can do is I can enter a dollar a percent or stored material. Now I can come in here and let's just say I did $20,000 worth of work here. Math automatically calculated. We can go the other way around, 50% here. We did 35% there, maybe another 60% here. Again, GCPay makes it so easy for your subs. All they need to do is either enter, whether it being a dollar or percent, GCPay is going to do the math for your subcontractor. So you never again have to worry about reviewing your subcontractor invoices for any sort of math errors. Or let's talk about overbilling. Let's just say, all right, we know this is 10,000, but I think I deserve 12. GCPay will not allow your subcontractors to overbill even by one penny. Oh. Hold on, I forgot a zero there. Let's make sure we have that correct. Even by one penny, there we go. So again, you never have to spend time reviewing subcontractor invoices for not only um, you know, math errors or overbilling or unapproved change orders. As you can see, there's nowhere here that a sub has the ability to, to include an additional line item. This is that change order which came through that we uh, approved. So only now do we have the ability to, uh, to bill against that approved change order. As you can see, balance to finish, automatically calculated, the percent of retainage. So none of your subcontractors have to be a mathematician anymore. It is all calculated perfectly every single time. Stored material. If you allow your subcontractors to bill for stored material, then this column would be available. If you do not, just know you have the ability to uh, not um, have this column available so that your subs are not able to bill for stored material. But I do wanna show you how GCPay does manage the billing of stored materials and have the ability to require any sort of that backup come along with this invoice. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in a value here. All right, scrolling down, as you can see under the summary here, your subcontractors are given uh, you know, a, a really nice transparency of exactly you know, what will be paid if approved. And we can just simply go ahead and hit save. All right, now, as you can see here, that same green box under submit, the submit button has been grayed out. And here we are again, it looks like there's some additional documents that are required to come along with this invoice. So as I mentioned earlier, 
we have the ability to require any sort of document come along, whether that being with the schedule of values or with your subcontractors invoices. This is ensuring that your team is never having to spend time again, chasing down any of these documents that you require. So I'm just going to go ahead and start at the top here. So third party reporting. So if you're currently tracking your tiered vendors of third party suppliers and vendors and requiring those tiered waivers manually, GC Pay has the ability to track and send those waivers for your tier contractors so that never again are you having to manually review those spreadsheets and uh, ensuring that those waivers came back your sub would just have the ability to go ahead and hit either no there's no third party uh, subs or yes there are so that it would bring them over to this liabilities tab where they would just simply go ahead and select those third party suppliers and vendors they would just be required to type in the description of work that contract value and the amount due this period now there's multiple ways that you can customize this in GC Pay. The way we have it set up under the demo uh, environment is that as soon as a general contractor approves the subcontractor's invoice, GC Pay will automatically send Sal Supply that tiered waiver where they would simply go ahead and get that signed, whether digitally or notarized and then have the ability to go ahead and either have the subcontractor upload back into GC Pay or using that cover sheet, uh, using that QR code to automatically import back into GC Pay where your team will be alerted, where you can go ahead and review that tiered waiver. All right, next item here is a checklist. So again, this is totally customizable, whether you have this turned on or turned off, the verbiage, again, completely customized. This is just an acknowledgement from your subcontractor. And what's important is that this shows up on the audit trail. I would say most of our customers have this turned on and say, if you're outdated on compliance, your payment will be held. They, your subcontractor would then have to physically check this. And like I mentioned earlier, this will show up on the audit trail. All right stored material so as i mentioned earlier because we had entered a value in the stored material column gc pay is smart and knows that backup is required to come along so again this is completely customizable verbiage up top you can have up to 10 different uh, items that you require as backup in order for your your subs to bill for stored material so again never again having to worry about chasing any of these items down again we've uploaded uh it looks like backup it's a picture of uh, some air handlers and there we go all right lastly are those lien waivers now i'm going to show you how your team can require lien waivers up front from your subs ensuring that you never again have to spend any time chasing them down. I highly doubt that there's gonna be a situation where you're asking for three lien waivers up front, but of course, we wanna be sure to show you the whole breadth of options. As you can see here, the general contractor is requiring two conditionals and an unconditional. Two can be signed digitally and one which requires notarization. Now, let's just start with the conditional that can be signed digitally. Now, just pretend, that this is one of your lien waivers, exactly how your lien waivers look today. The important piece is everything that you see here in bold are those custom tags. So the, the project name, the approved billing numbers, the location, the county, the start dates are automatically being customized and it's being pulled from the project information that you entered into Sage. So again, Never again does your team ever have to spend any time customizing lien waivers for your subcontractors, nor do you have to spend any time reviewing your subcontractor lien waivers for any sort of errors. You know that they're perfect every single time. Now we have the digital signature turned on, so I can just go ahead and hit sign document. It remembers my signature from the prior time. And now you can see how easy it is for your subs to go ahead and sign, and now it's dated. 
our digital signature is good by UETA guidelines and fully legal as a wet signature in all 50 states. All right, next is that conditional waiver that requires notarization. So if your sub has a you know, notary there in their office, they would just simply download it, get it notarized and re-upload back into the system. Alternatively, we have a partnership with notarize.com. During the pandemic, it was heavily requested by subs to have a notarization option that didn't require them going into a bank or a post office. Notarize.com opens up a Zoom screen like we're on now, the notary on the other side will online notarize the waiver and then it will be automatically imported back into GC Pay. We negotiated a max wait time of five minutes for notarize.com and online notary notarization is legal in all 50 states. And I'm simply just going to go ahead and upload my notarized conditional waiver. All right. Lastly, as you can see here, the general contractor is asking for an unconditional waiver. And you may be wondering, you know, why on earth would a sub ever sign an unconditional or final waiver before payment? The key here is that I have GC Pay's optional ACH feature turned on, which guarantees receipt of final or unconditional waiver. First, let's just take a look at the waiver. Just your normal unconditional waiver. Now, take a look when I hit sign document and sign, notice the lien waiver now has a watermark all over it that says unofficial copy. This is the key for your team on how you can ensure you're never chasing a waiver again. Since the ACH is being utilized, we're gonna take the funds from your bank account the second the money clears your sub's bank account, we will then release this waiver back to you without the watermark. In real life, your sub is being told, yes, while I'm submitting this unconditional or final, it will only be a watermarked version that the GC can view. And only once the funds clear my bank account will the official waiver be released back to the general contractor. This is leaving both parties completely protected. Your subs get paid quickly. You as a general contractor don't have to worry about storing your subs bank account information and it guarantees receipt of that waiver every single time. So again, never having to worry about chasing down these unconditional or final waivers. All right, now that we've submitted all of those required items, as we can see, we can now go ahead and hit submit. All right, now that we've submitted uh, the uh, invoice, I'm now gonna go ahead and log out and I'm gonna log back in as the, oops, sorry about that. There we go, as a general contractor. So we can go ahead and review and approve. I'm gonna go straight to my dashboard here under submitted. We can see that project, Jackson Heating and AC, application for payment number one. I'm gonna go ahead and hit review. We can go through, you know, line by line items here, make sure that this is in fact, you know, a picture of those air handlers, not a picture of their tropical family vacation. Scrolling down, we can take a look at all of the sub billings. If I was a project manager and I was walking the job in the uh, in the field, I could just come up here, show me current billings, get rid of all the noise and make sure that this in fact all looks correct. We also have that same exact summary that you saw on the sub side. So we know exactly how much will be paid if approved. We'll go ahead and hit review and approved. All right, the last step in the workflow would now be importing this invoice back into Sage Intact. I'm just gonna come up to that Sage Intact tab up top. This is gonna show me a list of all of my approved invoices. I can select one by one or I can select all. With the click of this button here, we are able to export the approved invoices directly back into Sage where it will go into that AP new file. Your invoice is automatically generated for you so never again are you ever going to have to worry about hand keying those approved invoices into sage they will automatically flow straight into sage intact the invoices generated for you if you're choosing to pay via paper check you can continue to pay your subs via paper check just as you guys are today out of sage alternatively if you did want to take advantage of 
the e-payment within GC Pay. I'll show you exactly what that looks like here. So I'm just gonna go back into that project and under that ACH tab, this is now gonna show me a list of any item that is now payable. So I can go ahead and select that approved invoice, hit create batch. And under status is going to show us where that payment may be. So you will have a treasury officer designated uh, who is going to be responsible for releasing payment to your subcontractors. So again, if you're only paying your subs when paid by the owner, you have the ability to keep that payment pending or in escrow uh, until you decide that you want to pay your sub. As soon as you release that payment, your sub is paid within two to three business days. Uh, and you can come back to your lien waivers, and this is where you would then also have the ability to review that unconditional waiver to be sure that that watermark is no longer there. Again, ensuring that you're not having to chase down that unconditional or final waiver. All right. Lastly here, we have company level reports. We have project level reports. These are all customer requested reports. Uh, you can take a look at, you know, report itemizing any account payables or maybe a report showing any compliance issues across all the, the jobs, a contractor billing summary or monthly cost bundle report. This one is heavily used by customers. You have the ability to select, you know, which month, how many months do you want to go back? Maybe you need to compile, a, you know, a, 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 commu um, a, a bunch of months worth of invoices. You have the ability, do we want to include any of the additional documents? Email me the report. That report comes to you automatically generated in that standard AIA style. So again, you never have to worry about spending time, uh, you know, generating any of your sub invoices in that AIA style. GC Pay will automatically generate that invoice for you. We have the G702, the G703. Here's that audit trail that shows exactly who did what within GC Pay, any of those, you know, lien waivers. And again, this is going to pool uh, based off of the parameters that you entered. So you now have the ability to download this, maybe email it out or print it out, whatever you need to do with it from that point forward. And that is pretty much GC Pay in a nutshell. So you may be wondering, all right, you know, what comes with GC Pay? Let me pull back open my PowerPoint presentation. Give me just a sec while I do so. All right, there we go. All right, so what comes with GC Pay? So GC Pay, we're going to train your entire team, uh, whoever needs to be a part of GC Pay, the, the application for payment process. We will also train all of your subs. Whether you want a you know recording for your subcontractors or a custom training, we, we can do either, it does not matter. But again, our onboarding manager will assist you with the entire you know, training, customizing your lien waivers and uploading them into the platform, making sure that all of your settings are set up exactly how you intend to use GC Pay so that you don't have to worry about figuring out how to do that on the back end. GC Pay is going to be completely set up, ready to go. All you need to do is just do the training so that you will be ready to go and use GC Pay. Our team will help uh, do the entire install and you are able to have as many users as needed. GC Pay does not charge by the number of seats, which means you can have unlimited users. Continuous training at no additional cost. Training is lifetime. So whether that's today or five years from today, you are able to go through training as many times as needed. Also support, which I must talk about support. GC Pay has an amazing support team. It's bilingual, English, as well as Spanish. And it's a true 24 seven support via phone, email, or even chat. So again, you never have to deal with fielding your subcontractor questions about invoicing. They are trying to contact GC Pay's support team directly. All right. So again, I wanna thank you all for joining me today and learning about GC Pay.
Uh, if you are interested in learning more, maybe wanting to maybe set up a, a call to, to go through a Q&A or set up a direct demo with you and your team, learning more about how you guys are managing that process today and being able to really uh, customize that demo and showing you how we can hopefully eliminate those pain points that you're dealing with today, give us a call. We are happy to get that meeting set up. Uh, you can contact your accordant uh, representative um, who can be sure to get that, that meeting scheduled. Uh, and Megan, with that, I'll go ahead and pass it back over to you. Well, thank you, Christina. Um, we don't have any questions in the chat box, but I'm going to unmute our participants to see if anybody has any questions they want to verbally ask. So does anyone have any questions for us? Okay, so there are no questions at this time. So thank you again for joining us. And uh, I hope everyone has a great day. Thank you.